If you have older relatives, test them. Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics. And today I have another viewer question that I think is good for helping to explain one of the principles that I've talked about several times on this channel. What is the likelihood of a genetic connection? Now, you may be wondering, what do I mean by that? Well, it's a good thing that Gary has given us some more explanation. I am seven generations from a person who I believe is my fifth great grandfather. My genetics don't show a genetic connection to my fifth great grandfather and his family. I recently had an 89 year old relative agree to do a DNA test. The 89 year old relative is only five generations from my fifth great grandfather. What is the likelihood that the 89 year old relative will have genetics to connect us to my fifth great grandfather? All right, with any big question like this, one of the things I like to do is draw things out to make sure that I'm understanding what the questioner has said. So in this case, this is what I have drawn out. We have Gary there down at the bottom on the left. We have seven generations up to Mike, and I've labeled those seven generations on the side so you can see that. And then down the other side, we have a series of Jim, Bill, and Fred, who I'm just assuming are matches to Gary, or in this case, not matches, because Gary says that he doesn't have a genetic connection back to his fifth great-grandfather, to Mike. So these are potential matches that don't actually match Gary. In other words, they descend from Mike through some known genealogy, but they don't share any DNA with Gary. Now, Gary suspects that Mike is his fifth great grandfather, but he doesn't know. So he has gone and he has tested Joe. And Joe is two generations closer to Mike. And so that would mean that he likely has more DNA, more chance to actually match with some of these people. So when we're talking about likelihood and we're talking about probability of matching some distant cousin, one of the resources that I use a lot is from the 23andMe website. If you look up cousins and the probability of matching cousins, they'll have this little chart here that shows what percentage of that cousin you match. So for instance, you have DNA shared with 100% of your first cousins it's impossible not to share DNA with a first cousin. With a second cousin, they say 90, more than 99%. And if you read into some of the literature, what it shows is that they've never come across a second cousin that doesn't share DNA. But from some statistical modeling, it's a possibility. Very remote possibility, but a possibility. As you get to third cousins, it's only 90%. So if you had 100 third cousins, you would share DNA with 90 of them and 10 of them you wouldn't share any DNA with. And it goes down from there and you can see that the numbers start to drop pretty rapidly. At fourth cousins, it's only 45%. At fifth, it's 15%. At sixth, it is less than 5%. Let me just be solid on some of these numbers and add a little bit. So I'm gonna say that first is 100%. I'm gonna say that second is 99%, even though it's more than 99%. And I'm going to add seventh cousins at 1% in this case. So where does Gary fall here with this? Well, if we go back and if we count up, what we find is that Gary and Fred are sixth cousins, which means Gary has only a 5% probability of sharing DNA with Fred. So the fact that Fred and Gary don't share any DNA is not surprising. In fact, probably all of Fred's siblings and some of Fred's first cousins, probably all of them don't share DNA with Gary either. Okay. And that is why Gary had one of his older relatives test, Joe, who's two generations closer. So in this case, when we look at this chart here and we count up and count down, what we find is that Joe and Fred are fourth cousins twice removed. Now, if you remember that chart that I showed you, fourth cousins was listed on there but fourth cousins twice removed was not listed on there. So where does fourth cousins twice removed fit in? Well, I expanded it a little bit and you can see here that starting with second cousins, 
Second cousins is the same thing as first cousins twice removed when it comes to the amount of DNA that you share and the probability of sharing DNA with those. Third cousins is same as first cousins four times removed and second cousins twice removed. And as you go down, you're going to start to see a pattern where we've got even numbers as far as the number of times removed that are being added on to each one of the previous cousins all the way down to where we're looking for fourth cousins twice removed. That is the same thing as a fifth cousin. One of the things you may be wondering now, well, what about a first cousin once removed or a third cousin three times removed? This is only showing even numbers of generations removed. It's not showing the odd numbers. For that, we need to make an addition to the chart here. I have gone in and interpolated what the probability percentage would be with this. So a first cousin once removed is actually in between a second cousin and a first cousin. So we're gonna say 99.9%. .9%. A second cousin once removed is in between a second cousin and a third cousin. So 94% and on down the line. So between these two, you can actually see how much each Cousin with the number of generations removed is out to seventh cousins once removed. And as you can see, it starts to get really small. So let's go back and look at our graphic here. We know that Joe and Fred are fourth cousins twice removed. So they have a 15% chance of sharing DNA, which is triple the chance that Gary had with it. So in a quick answer to his question, yes. Having tested Joe, he's going to have a better probability of matching. However, since I would say this probability is still less than 50%, it's still not a good probability of being able to use DNA to show a relationship back to Mike in this case. But I listed on there Bill and Jim as possibilities that might be able to match. So let's look at each one of those. Bill is going to be a fourth cousin once removed. And that is a higher probability than what there was with a fourth cousin twice removed. So Joe and Bill have a 25% chance of matching, which is starting to get fairly decent. And Joe and Jim, they would be fourth cousins because of where they fit on here. So if Gary was able to find some people that were in this level, then Joe and Jim actually have a 45% chance of matching, almost one in two. So if you found three or four people at this level, almost certainly if Joe and Gary were descended from Mike, one of them would match Joe. While none of them might match Gary, probably at least one of three or four of them would match Joe. So what we can learn from this is... If you have older relatives, test them, ask them, because their DNA is actually going to be much more valuable as far as matches and being able to show these older relationships. We can see from this chart that I was showing you that within seven generations, your chance of matching just a, any random person that's also descended from that is 5% or less in this case. So you're going to have to go through a lot of people before you necessarily find a match. And if some of those people haven't tested, then your chance of identifying that connection is going to be greatly diminished. Now, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And if you wanna learn something more about DNA, then check out this video up here.